Hello and good evening to all. Uh, I welcome you all in this webinar, Building Solutions with Azure Open AI and Prompt Engineering. I hope you all can see my screen and you all can hear me. So we will be waiting for more participants to join. As I can see, the participants are still joining, so we'll wait for them to join. Till the time, I will be sharing the social media platform links as well as the details for upcoming webinars in the chat box. So you all can go through that if you want to register for the certification webinars. Other than that, we have Gen AI coming up in the December month. We will be sharing all the details regarding it in the chat box. So make sure you check the chat box.
those who have connected late, please note we are waiting for other participants to join as well. Uh, till the time, as I have mentioned earlier, I have shared the details in the chat box. I have shared the social media platform links, communities uh, like meetup communities on which we do update the upcoming webinars workshop. Also, I have mentioned the Gen AI topics which will be conducted in the month of December. So make sure you go through that and if you are interested in the topics which has been mentioned, you can go and register yourself. Okay, so we are good to start the webinar now. Hello and welcome you all in this webinar called Building Solutions with Azure OpenAI and Prompt Engineering. Uh, myself, Shaitali, your host for this webinar. Uh, please note, me and my team will be there to help you out throughout this webinar. You just need to use the chat window uh, to ask the questions and queries as we have kept the or keep the participants on mute to conduct the webinar smoothly. Uh, talking about uh, today's event, the webinar sponsor, Synergetics. So Synergetics is India's one of a kind corporate learning solution company. So now we'll get the question, what we do and who we are. So answering to that, we browse you all through the offerings and also give a comprehensive advisory services to the clients who wish to modernize their framework. Uh, we do educate, advise, implement, and manage. Then the solutions which Synergetics provide. Solutions like persona-based onboarding, onboarding add-on. Then we have certification solution, certification add-on solution. Reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, 
cloud adoption solution. Then we have latest technology training solution, sales pre sales solution, then practice playbook solution and architecting solution. Then the Microsoft uh, certification training. So this certification will give you a complete learning experience. You will get trained, build confidence to appear the exam and get certified. That is get recognized. Then the delivery material methodology with synergetics provide like how you can go for the advanced certification once you complete the fundamental training. Uh, this journey path. Here you can see we do provide advanced pre training at minimum cost. For that you have to first complete the fundamental training and you can go for the advanced level certification as well. Then this trainings include live mentoring sessions, practice lab, exam prep session, practice test for the certifications. Then you're ready to appear for the certification. We have uh, three types of learning like. Guided self learning, then we have blended learning. And instructor led training to know more about this certification trainings and the learning journey path. You all can connect with us. I will share the details in the chat box later on. Then the certification benefits to the organization. You can shift from unstructured learning to structural learning. Then you can build a competitive advantages for the company. Then adding profit to your business, enhance brand reputation and more. The skilling journey path, like how you can advance yourself. For that, you just have to skill yourself on the level of fundamental. Then you can go for the advanced role base as well as the expert level certifications. Then the certification trainings with synergetics provide. In fundamental certification, we do provide AZ 900, that is Azure fundamental training. Then we provide uh, training on AI 900, that is Azure AI fundamental. DP 900, which is related to the data fundamental. Then we have PL 900, Power Platform fundamental, and SC 900, security compliance and identity fundamental. Also, we have a uh, second level that is role based certifications. Like AZ 104, AZ 204, AI 102, DP 203. Then we have PL series and SC series. Also in expert level, we do provide AZ 305 training. Then we have SC 100, PL 600 and AZ 400. So the certification will help you to increase your visibility like has been mentioned in the certification offerings. This will expand your knowledge and skills. We also do provide certification add ons, onboarding add ons like short duration modules and more. So today's training is organized and handled by ATC community that is Azure tech community. So ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in cloud technologies. Under this community, we have various communities like emerging technology community for all. Then we have Azure tech community Pune for Pune girls. Then we have emerging technology community Surat for Surat Tech. Then we have Azure Tech community Nagpur for Nagpur Kurs. All you just have to need to install the meetup app on your phone or on your device and get this uh, communities followed. We do share the upcoming webinars, workshop, 
trainings related to the certifications which we do. I will share the links in the chat box. You all can go and follow us on this communities as well to get the updates. Code of conduct, please note no one is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording. Uh, those who are attending this webinar, uh, we will provide the recordings on your registered email ID for your revision. Also, we will so to upload this recording on official YouTube channel. For that, you have to follow us on our official YouTube channel. The link will be mentioned in the chat box. Speaker for this session, Mr. Sonu Satyadas. He's a Microsoft certified trainer and currently works with Synergetics as practice set. Then we have agenda for this webinar. Also, please note we are providing AI, uh, AI 050 learning achievement batch in this webinar, which includes study material like an overview of the modules, topics which are related to this webinar. You can also share this batch on your LinkedIn and Twitter profile. To get the batch activated, you just need to follow certain steps. As you can see on the screen, the steps has been mentioned. You just have to open your Microsoft Learn profile. You have just if you don't have any profile created on Microsoft Learn, you just have to create one. And then we will be mentioning the URL for the batch. You just have to click on that ba batch link and get the batch activated. Once the badge get activated, it will reflect on your profile. So make sure you get this badge activated. So we are coming up with the Gen AI Spark webinar series for the month of December. Topics and dates has been mentioned on the screen, as you can see. As I said earlier, I have mentioned the topics in the chat box with the registration link. If you all are interested. To. Attend this webinar, you can go and register yourself. Then make sure you follow us on our LinkedIn platform, Facebook platform. Also on Twitter page and YouTube channel. The links has been mentioned already on the chat window. That's all from my side. Thank you to all. Now I would like to hand over the mic to the speaker so they can take ahead the webinar. Thank you. Yeah, hello. Over to you, <coughs> Sunny, sir. OK. Thank you, Chaitali. Let me share my screen. I hope the screen is uh, visible to all of you. Myself, uh, Sonu Satyadas. Currently, I'm working with Synergetics as a practice herd. So I'm in to training industry from last 15 plus years, uh, mostly delivering sessions on the cloud, AI, and open source technologies. So I'm a Microsoft certified cloud trainer. And uh, this webinar primarily uh, focusing on this uh, Azure Open AI and the prompt engineering will be discussing more about the Azure Open AI and the prompt engineering. As everyone knows, currently, the trending technology is artificial intelligence. So we have different services, applications currently using the artificial intelligence. It may be an application which is accessible over the internet, or it may be a mobile application, 
or it may be some products and services or devices that we have. Like. Uh, devices like uh, Alexa or uh, the driverless cars, all these using this artificial intelligence. The artificial intelligence is not a new term or terminology. It is. The, the invention of artificial intelligence started in 1950s. And the primary objective of artificial intelligence is to mimic the capabilities of human. And the fundamental concepts of artificial intelligence or the, the base is uh, machine learning which is a subset of AI that enables machines to learn from the existing data that you provide and uh, take some decisions based on the data provided. So it can predict something new from the data which, uh, which is used to train that particular machine learning model. Deep learning is another kind of uh, AI uh, tool or technology that nowadays most popular because of gen AI technologies. It's a machine learning technique in which the layers of the neural networks are used to process the data and make decisions. All the modern AI services, including the gen AI, using this deep learning technologies, it's a multi layer uh, neural networks analyzing the data and producing the responses. The generative AI is the new member in the artificial intelligence uh, family and it is capable to create different kinds of outputs. It can be a text output or maybe an image or it could be a audio or video. Based on the text or we can call it as prompt. So based on the input text that we are providing to the model. It will be able to generate. New. Uh, responses or new contents. It can be. A blog or a presentation or it may be some kind of articles, question and answers. Or sometimes you can even draw the images. Produce the audio. Uh, you can transcript the uh, text. From the audios, so all can be done with the help of uh, the new generative AI models. So all of us are now aware open AI is one of the. Uh, research laboratory in the US that generate or that creates different uh, machine learning models or deep learning models. Under open AI. This open AI. Is a collection of. AI models or deep learning models. That can be used for various purposes because some of the models are text based models which is used for. Producing the text outputs. Kind of uh, blogs. Or Q and A's articles or you can. Produce some kind of uh, presentation slides. Not in the PPT format, but in the case in the form of text. And uh, it is also possible to create the images using the open AI models, something like uh, DAL E. You can even use a uh, whisper for processing the audio, right? So that means different uh, uh, machine learning models or deep learning models are provided by open AI. The open AI's mission is to ensure 
that artificial intelligence has to go to everyone. Every human being should be able to use the artificial intelligence, not only the developers or experts, those who are aware about the machine learning or deep learning. So to a simple human being, you should be able to leverage the benefits of artificial intelligence, maybe directly or indirectly. So OpenAI Incorporated is a non-profit organization under the OpenAI. And they have a profit subsidiary for that, that is Open AI Limited Partnership. So this Open AI models are published for public, and we can go and subscribe and use these machine learning models. Some of the models which which is which are published by the Open AI are GPT that is generative pre-trained transformer models. There are different versions of GPT models released. Over the years, it, they have uh, released many versions. So currently, the latest version of GPT model is 4, but it's not freely available to the public. You can subscribe. I, if I'm not wrong, it is uh, $20 per month we can pay and uh, consume this uh, GPT-4 model, but the GPT-3.5 is absolutely free and you can use uh, just by creating an account in the OpenAI. DAL-E is another model which is capable to generate or edit the images based on the text that you are providing. So, so it means that you can simply tell the model to draw an image of so and so object or you can describe about the image. So what is there in your mind, you can tell the model to draw it and the model is capable to do that. The Whisper is another model which is offered by OpenAI and it is a general purpose speech recognition model which is primarily used for the audio processing something like a speech recognition translation and language detection embeddings is another model which is converting the text into uh, a vector of numerical values which can be used to measure the rate relationship between the text and the moderation model, as the name indicates, it is used to moderate the contents, whether it contains any harmful uh, uh, information or sensitive information or sexual or violence or some other threatening content. So you will be able to detect these things using the moderation model and some of these models can be customized because all these models comes as a pre-trained model which means all these are trained with millions of uh, data available in the internet but sometimes these models may not satisfy your requirement in a specific area or in a specific industry. So in such scenarios, you will be able to customize these models. Not all these models, but some of the models are customizable, which we call as fine tuning. For example, if I want to customize my model to uh, handle my organization's data, maybe I want to uh, analyze the employee's performance by uh, analyzing their leave reports, project submissions, the other uh, activities. So all these informations we can provide as an input 
as I train the data to the model and fine tune the model to get the expected response or expected result, which means you will be able to uh, fine tune the model to generate the response that you are expecting. Like uh, I want to uh, find out the top performing employees in my organization. So that can come from the employees performance reports. So the model will be able to analyze these reports and then uh, produce the responses. So you'll be able to train the model using your own custom data. And then you, these customized models can be then used inside your applications, which we call as fine tuning. The one of the most commonly used uh, open AI model is GPT, which is generative pre-trained transformer. And uh, the publicly available latest version is uh, 3.5. The version 4 is also available, but it is uh, limited with subscriptions, which you have to pay and use. So chat GPT is the common name that we use for it and it is an AI driven chatbot that allows you to have a human like conversation. So chat GPT is a, a chatbot which uses the GPT model. So if you want to converse with the model or if you want to consume the model, you will be able to go and use the chat GPT chatbot and you can ask whatever you want and the chatbot is able to produce it with the help of the GPT model. So Microsoft being an investor of the open AI is rapidly moving to integrate the chat GPT and the other AI features into their existing products, including the Bing search. You can you, you must be aware nowadays the, 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 the GitHub Copilot is also an AI based uh, service which can generate the code based uh, on the comments provided by the developer. So that means nowadays the developer need not to write the code. You just need to say that, OK, I want to write the code for doing so and so. And this AI model is capable to write the code for you. And Microsoft is already implemented this uh, GPT inside their Bing search. If you go to the Bing search, you will be able to see it's now doing the search with the help of GPT model. GPT 3.5 is the short for the generative pre-trained transformer 3.5. It's a cutting tech, cutting edge technology or cutting edge language model developed by OpenAI. It's capable in understanding and generating human-like text, which means you will be able to uh, produce any kind of text information. It can be a blog. Usually only humans can write the blogs. Humans can generate the question and answers. Humans can only create presentations. Humans can only write the stories. Humans can only do the or write the poems. But now, with the help of GPT, you are able to do all with the help of the AI model. GPT 3.5 can comprehend and generate text in conjunction with other modalities such as images and audio. So if you go with the latest uh, GPT 4, it can accept the images or audio kind of uh, inputs also and uh, produce uh, textual responses. The common terminologies that we use in chat GPT or GPT is uh, primarily the prompt and then completions and then tokens. Because as a GPT user, 
how you converse or how you communicate with the GPT model with the help of prompt. So prompt, you can say it's a sentence or a phrase that is presented to the GPT uh, for generating the response. So you can tell the model that I want this. So you can provide a textual description about what you want. In a layman terms, a prompt is an input to the model. And this model is capable to identify what you want from the given text and it is it will be producing the responses uh, based on the uh, trained data. Completions is the output which is generated by the language model. So when you provide the prompt with the help with the request, the model will be producing a response. So the a response which is produced by the model is called completion. The completion is the answer to your question. Simply what you are asking with the, with the prompt, you will get a text response and that is the completion. Whenever you make a request to the model, your request will be submitted to a completion endpoint. So there is a restful endpoint which is receiving the request which is provided by the user and uh, this completion endpoint is simply re returning an http response uh, which is the completion response tokens is another important terminology that we use in gpt because the amount of data which we can use in the request and response is defined by the token. So what is the token size that can be handled by the model defines the quality and quantity of the response. So a token simply means a unit of text that the model is processing. It may be a word or maybe a group of characters, maybe three to four characters you can consider as a token or in case of small words, one complete word can be a token. So how many tokens the model is able to uh, handle in a single request and response that defines the capability of that particular model? If you say that I want to write an essay, but you are saying the number of tokens to be used is just a 50. So it will try to summarize everything within that 50 tokens because that the, the, the request that you are sending is also consumed in that tokens. So 50 token, if you mention what is the request you are sending, the request text or prompt also contains a set of uh, characters which is also counted in the total token count. So tokenization is the process of breaking down a piece of text into smaller tokens to facilitate the language modeling task. Means how this GPT is working. It's a using a transformer model, which is dividing the given text into small tokens and assigning a weightage to these tokens. And with the help of a, an encoder, it's doing that and then processing this model with a multi layer uh, pro, uh, uh, model and then producing the responses with the decoder. So, that transformer model used inside the GPT is dividing the given text into multiple tokens, assigning the weightage, encoding the data, and finally producing the response by decoding it. If you are an open AI user or if you are a developer who wants to consume these open AI services, you have to use an API key. As I have mentioned, if 
you go and subscribe the open ai in the open ai portal you will be getting an api key which can be used for consuming the gpt models this api key helps the system to or helps the user to authenticate and how much data you have consumed from where the request is coming the open ai service is understanding with the help of api keys not just for authentication so suppose if there is a quota assigned whether you have exceeded that quota or not that is calculated using the api key the prompt as i have mentioned it is the text input that we provide as part of the request the prompt may contain some examples also because it helps the model to format the responses uh, based on this given examples so if you say that okay i want to generate a set of questions but the questions format should be like this and then you can give an example question so that when the response is generated it use that example question to format the result an explicit description of what exactly do you want to set of clear instructions the completion endpoint as i have mentioned it's a it's an interface to the open ai models so you input some text as a prompt and the model generates the text completion so there is an http endpoint which is which we call as completion endpoint and as a user you will be making a request to this completion endpoint with the with the api key because api key is required for authentication once the endpoint identifies that request is correctly formatted and it contains a valid authentication key then it will start processing your request so in the process means it can be a code generation or it may be summarizing the text or uh, creating a lengthy blogs or articles or maybe some creative writing like uh, writing the stories or poems or something like that very simply you can see an example like uh, we can say a prompt like uh, write a tagline for the ice cream shop and the completion which means the response can be we serve up smiles with ev every scoop means that is a tagline that we can use for the ice cream shop it's a, it's generated by the ai model the token as we have discussed the open ai model understand and process the text by breaking down this text into tokens a simply a token maybe a single word or maybe a, a group of characters with a three to four uh, words uh, sorry three to four characters inside it and uh, different uh, models different uh, gpt models having different uh, token size so gpt 3.5 you consider it may use a 4k token size some models may use 16k token size some models may have 32k token size k means kilo means th in thousands you can calculate the temperature is an important setting which we can configure while making the request it's a value typically comes between 0 and 1 and it is used to get the completion result with the same value every time it will return the same result means temperature is used to configure how different results it can produce or how random results it is producing higher the value more innovative results are expected which may be beyond uh, our expectations so it may be more it will be more creative if you put the value higher so the temperature is uh, used for configuring how creative this model is 
And there is very important thing which you need to use is a model. If you if you are planning to use the GPT model, the GPT itself having different uh, sub models inside it like uh, uh, DaVinci, Curry, Babbage, Ada and many other things. So which version of GPT model you are using, you have to uh, be aware. So if sometimes you may be using GPT-3 or sometimes GPT-3.5 or sometimes you may be using GPT-4. And GPT-3.5 itself is different types. GPT-3.4 Turbo is there. GPT-3.5 4K is there. GPT-3.5 16K is there. So there are different types of models available. So you, while making the request, you can specify which model needs to be used for processing this request. And fine tuning, as I have mentioned, if the existing model is not satisfying your requirements, you can do fine tuning with your own data. It means you can train the models with your own data and create a custom model. Fine tuning improves a few short learning by training on many more examples that can fit in the prompt, letting you to achieve better results on a wide range, uh, wide number of tasks. Means you will be training the model with a custom data. And once a model has been fine tuned, you won't be, uh, you won't need to provide examples in the prompt anymore because you have already trained the model with the sample data. So otherwise, if you are using the pre-trained models, you may have to pro provide some examples for getting the expected result because the model is capable to generate the results, but it may not be in a format that you are expecting. But if you need a, your responses should be in a specific format, then you can provide some examples along with the prompt. So it will be capable to to produce the responses in that particular format. But if you have done the fine tuning with your own data, then you don't need to provide any examples because you have already trained the model with those examples so that the model is capable to produce the results in that expected format. This saves cost and enables lower latency requests because if you are including the examples inside your uh, prompt or inside your request, obviously it is increasing the number of tokens because the total token count is uh, also calculating the input request tokens, not only the response tokens. So uh, instead of using examples each and every time, which uh, increases the cost because the cost is typically calculated based on the tokens, number of tokens used. And if the size increases, the re request and response size increases, there can be a latency. So if you make very simple requests, then you can reduce the latency. At a high level, fine tuning involves the following steps, which means prepare and upload the training data. You can train a new fine-tuned model and then use your fine-tuned models in your applications and services. Fine-tuning is currently only available for the following base models like a DaVinci, Curie, Babbage, and Ada. So that means not every model is supporting the fine-tuning. Only selected models are supporting the fine-tuning process. So if you are planning to fine tune your uh, open AI models, then you have to be very, very much aware which of the models are supporting the fine tuning capability. So I can show you one demo of uh, GPT. Uh, with the Python code, but uh, it is more with the 
Azure Open AI. So I'll be demonstrating this uh, Python example after we covering the Azure Open AI. So, so far we have discussed the uh, Open AI features, Open AI models, what is fine tuning, what is prompt and completions and so on. But what is Azure Open AI? The Open AI is a model, gen generative AI model uh, released under or released by the Open AI Research Laboratory. But Azure Open AI is a set of uh, Open AI models that can be used from the Azure regions. So how? Because the Open AI models which you are uh, subscribing from the Open AI website will be serving from uh, a specific locations only, maybe from US or some other uh, locations. And all the requests will go to that Open AI servers, and uh, it will it may take some time to process the responses because millions of users will be consuming the same Open AI server for processing their uh, request. But when you use the Azure Open AI, these Open AI models can be deployed in your own. Azure subscription means it's not a new model, but the same Azure, so the same open AI models can be deployed in the Azure regions. So instead of uh, consuming the open AI services from US, uh, US region, you can deploy the open AI service in your uh, uh, nearest region, maybe South India or maybe East US or maybe uh, Southeast Asia or wherever you want. So there are some supported locations where the OpenAI services are currently supported. So you can see the list of regions that support the OpenAI. I'll be showing that list later. So first thing, you will be able to deploy the OpenAI models in uh, the selected regions where you want to deploy, you can deploy it there. Secondly, it will be using the compute of Azure. So instead of uh, uh, processing all the requests in the Open AI servers, these Azure Open AI uh, models will be executed with the help of Azure compute, which means the compute which is the VMs which is required for processing the request will be provided by Azure so that you are if you create your own account your request will be only will be processed by that servers because you have created a, an open AI service within your subscription so it in, in that particular region so that the open AI request that you make from your application will go to that particular region and execute with the help of the Azure compute. But understand if you need the Azure open AI services in your subscription, you have to uh, first uh, make a request, means you have to submit a uh, request to Microsoft to enable the the, the open AI services in your uh, account or in your subscription. And here the cost is calculated based on the number of tokens. So here you can see it's priced a dollar zero zero two per thousand tokens and billing for the chat GPT uh, usage begins uh, March 13, 2023. So the initial preview uh, versions were not chargeable, but from March 2013, 2023, it is start charging for uh, the request. It is not only providing uh, the Azure compute for executing the uh, OpenAI request. Uh, as an Azure service, you can add some additional uh, features which is available in the Azure cloud, like a uh, network, uh, level protection so you can deploy your 
Azure OpenAI services within a virtual network, or you can make sure that it is accessible only from uh, a selected network. And you can even monitor these services uh, with the Azure monitoring services. So that means uh, not only it providing the open AI services, but also it is adding some enterprise features to the model, which means like a networking, monitoring, and uh, throttling, and all these features are added into the Azure Open AI. So if you if you ask me what is the difference between Open AI and Azure Open AI, so they are using the same set of models, but they use a different compute and environment because the Azure Open AI services are running the the, the GPT models or DAL E models or Whisper models from the Azure compute environments, and it will be uh, having the enterprise level features like a uh, networking support and monitoring and so on. So Microsoft is integrating this open AI features into their products and services already, like a uh, GitHub Copilot is one of the example. And uh, Microsoft Teams Premium is using that, and also the Microsoft Bing. So if you go to if you go to the Microsoft uh, portal, if you see here is the Bing. Instead of uh, going and registering to the uh, chat GPT, you can st uh, still go and use the GPT services from the Bing. So here is, so if you are a GPT user, yes, you can go to chat.openai.com. So here you will be able to go and uh, uh, subscribe. So currently you can see the 3.5 model is available for free and GPT-4 is uh, available only with subscriptions, which means you have to upgrade it to a paid model. So here, whatever uh, prompt you are providing, suppose uh, we can say create a small story about a kid and a doll. Something you are providing, it will be able to generate a story. You can see here, I have given a prompt. Based on that prompt, it is generating a simple story. And similar thing you can do here as well. So this is also, but yes, this is more integrated with the search. So you can go and ask something to the Bing also, but it is, you can see the difference between this uh, uh, responses. So the same prompt I'm going to use here. So it is processing what it is processing. You can see it is uh, creating a story. And here you can see uh, above you have an option for configuring the uh, parameter like uh, it can be more creative or more balanced or more precise, which means the temperature parameter which we have discussed the between the zero and one we can configure. If you make it a uh, higher value, then it will be more creative and it will be creating uh, uh, different responses each and every time. But if you want to uh, stick to specific results, then you can make it more precise. So this is more balanced means it is, yes, at the same time it is creative as well as it is stick to the topic. So here you can see it is also creating the story and you can see, yes, it goes one step ahead and created one uh, uh, image, which is using the DAL E3, right? So you can see this, is uh, using the uh, GPT model behind the scenes for generating the responses. Yes, you can either use this. So similarly, there are uh, other uh, generative AI services also there, like Google's Bard is another one. So if you are uh, if you are a Google user, the same set of services available using the Google Bard also. But yes, we are not discussing about the Google's Bard here, so you can uh, st we can stick to the the uh, Chat GPT or GPT models and uh, 
Microsoft Azure. So as an Azure user, if uh, you want to create and use the uh, open AI services, the first thing that you have to do is to make a request to Microsoft for enabling the OpenAI service in your subscription. Without having this uh, feature enabled in your subscription, if you start creating your uh, OpenAI service, then you may fail because it will give you that you it's not enabled in your subscription, so you can uh, first make a request to enable the open AI services. A simple uh, uh, the, the Microsoft Forms or Google Form kind of form you have to fill and submit. So you can see if the open AI service is enabled in your Azure account, you will be able to create that with the help of Azure portal or with the help of Azure CLI. If you are creating it with Azure CLI, you can use the AZ Cognitive Services account create command. So here you will be creating an account and you can specify the name and the resource group and the location and the kind of service you can specify as OpenAI. So you are actually creating a Cognitive Service account, but the kind of service is OpenAI. And the SKU you can say is S0, which is the standard, and the subscription you can specify the subscription ID. So, subscription ID is required because it verifies whether this feature is enabled in your subscription. But if you are creating it using the portal, you can simply go to Azure portal and search for the uh, Open AI and start creating the Azure OpenAI service. While creating this, you can specify the subscription, resource group, region, name, and pricing tier. So I'll show you how this can be created in the Azure portal. Simply, we can go to the Azure portal, and I'll be creating this by searching for OpenAI. It's already enabled in your, yeah, sorry, in my subscription. And you can see now in the Azure portal also, it is giving something like AI generated suggestions uh, in, your, in, in our search. So you can see AI is now used everywhere for uh, making things very simple. So here I have searched for open AI and you can see different open AI related or AI related services and I'm making it very simple and selecting the Azure services only. And you can see the Azure Open AI is available. So I'm just selecting this and create. And I can fill the values. Uh, here I can specify the uh, subscription and the resource group. Resource group name I'm giving Open AI group. And I can specify the region where you want to deploy it. So I can select uh, South India or East US or North Central US or different locations. But understand the open AI services offers different models and different models are available in different regions. Some of the models are not available in East US but it will be available in North Central US. For some of the models which is available, uh, which is not available in uh, North Central US, but it will be available in South India. So you should be aware which service you are planning to use and in which of the regions it is available. So if you want to know the availability of services, in different regions, you can go to the Microsoft Azure documentation. And you can go to the model section. So here in the left side, you can click on this models. So there's the open AI's documentation. So when you scroll down, you can see what are the different models which is supported like a GPT-4 models, GPT-3.5 models, 
embeddings dal e and whisper so dal e and whisper are currently in preview which means uh, not ready for production so if you go to gpt4 what are the different gpt4 models like a uh, gpt4 and gpt4 32k uh, version and gpt3.5 gpt3 uh, 35 turbo G gpt turbo 16k and gpt turbo instruct so there are different versions of uh, gpt 3.5 is also available like uh, embeddings available dal e and uh, whisper so if you want to know the locations where it is available the gpt and gpt gpt 4 and gpt 4 turbo models are currently available in selected locations only you can see here the locations which is available right so you can see australia is canada is france central switzerland and this is available in east us right uh this, but this there is a condition like uh, available to subscription with the current access to the model version model version in the region okay but 3.5 model i think it is more uh, available in uh, means it is available in more of these regions as you can see east us uh, france central that is you can also see the different versions like uh, this is 0301 this is 0613 this is a uh, turbo 16k 0613 so you have to be very much aware how many how many tokens it can handle you can see it is uh, 4k tokens and this is 16k and uh, yeah, this is up to 16K. So you can choose a location. So if you if you are planning to use a 16K model, then you have to select a location from this. Similarly, we, if you are planning to use embeddings models, you can see which of the locations it is available. This is embeddings ADA002, and this is a, a text embedding version 1. Okay, so this is version one, that is version two. Version two is more available available in more locations. Similarly, DAL E. DAL E is again two versions, DAL E2 and DAL E3. And DAL E3 is currently only available in the Sweden Central. So if you are uh, creating or if you are planning to use DAL E, then you have to create it in the Sweden Central location. That's the only location which is currently available. But DAL E is available in East US, DAL E2. Similarly, the uh, fine tuning models, which is currently available, these are also in North Central US and Sweden Central. And Whisper is only available in two locations that is North Central US and the West Europe. So, this, and you can see this is the maximum audio size you can use. Suppose if you are making a request by uploading the audio, the maximum size of the audio uh, is 25 MB, right? So here I'm planning to create this uh, in North Central US because I think most of the services are available here, but I'm not sure about the... So. GPT model, GPT is... Yeah, okay, North Central US, it's available. So let me go and create it in the North Central US. I can select the location and I can provide a name. So I'm just giving the BST Open AI. And the pricing tier is currently only standard is available. So, okay, this name is already in use. So I'll say 01. Okay, that's fine. And you have to review the policies because the responsible AI is defining a set of uh, policies or, or principles that as a AI user, what are the things you have to do and what are things you should not do that things are defined. So read the policies and I can go. And this feature is provided by Azure, like a network integration. So you can make sure that the AI services are accessible from all the networks or only from the selected network. So you can make 
sure that the AI services are only accessible from the selected virtual networks. But for time being, I'm just making it accessible from all the networks, including my uh, local machine. And you can add some uh, key and value that is tags and then create the resource. I'm just uh, creating it. So in the portal, you will be able to create the service very quickly just by providing the values in the text boxes. So then once you have deployed or once you have created your open AI service, you will be able to start using those services with the help of an Azure Open AI Studio. The Azure Open AI Studio is a separate portal which provides the uh, features or which is helping us to deploy the models, test the models, and you can even train the model. So you can add the data files. Okay, so different types of uh, services you can try out in the Open AI Studio. So you can see uh, uh, the it's a web portal which is uh, available for uh, managing your Open AI models. And you can see and deploy the base models and uh, connect with your own data source, manage the fine tuning and data files for custom models. And you can even do the testing for some of the APIs. So if you see, once this deployment is done, so here you can see my open AI instance or service is deployed. And here you will see the key and endpoint. So here, this is the key one and key two, which we can use uh, while making the request to the uh, Open AI service, because this key is used for authenticating the request. And here you can see the endpoint. This endpoint is an HTTP URL, which is acting as the base a URL for the, the request. So if you are making the request through the REST APIs, then this will be the base URL. But if you are making the request using the uh, client SDK libraries, then you can use this uh, inside your application code to specify which service or instance you are using, or this will be containing your service instance name as you see this is the service instance name so this is the base endpoint which we use inside our mm. application code and if you go to the model deployments before start using any of this uh, models whether it is gpt 3.5 or gpt 4 or maybe some other uh, models whether it is dal e or anything you have to first to do a deployment because there are some base models available and these base models you have to deploy and create a new instance of that model because you'll be making request to that deployed models so you can go to the manage deployments because model deployments are now done inside the azure open ai studio so you can click on this manage deployments to go to that particular page or in the overview page itself. You will be able to see the link for the Azure Open AI Studio. So if you click here, you will be going into the Azure Open AI Studio. And this is the user interface for the Azure Open AI Studio. And here you can see we are getting an in, uh, a notification saying that there are no deployments detected, which means if you want to start using any of these models or features like a chat or completions or DAL E functionality for drawing the images, you have to do first a deployment. So you can go to the deployment section. 
and then create a new deployment. So when you do the deployment, what are the different models available in this particular region? Because here you can see in the rightmost corner, it's, it is currently in North Central US. So in North Central US, what are the different models available? As you can see, GPT-4 is available, Whisper is available, but DAL-E is not available here, right? So I can use GPT-4 or uh, uh, GPT-3.5 Turbo. So there are different models available. So suppose if I'm planning to deploy GPT-3.5 Turbo or GPT-35 Turbo, I can select this and then click on this deploy. Or I can go to deployments and then create a new deployment. And from here, I can select the model. So here you can see what are the different models available. So I can go and use this. I'm selecting the GPT uh, 3.5 Turbo and then specify the name of the deployment. So name, you can give the same as the model name so it will be easy to recognize so if you want you can give any name any text name that represents the model but <clears throat> i likes to give the same name of the model for the deployment also so i'll give it i'll be giving gpt 35 hyphen turbo then click on this create to do the deployment of this model as you can see the model is deploying and it's created sorry so you can see the model is just uh, deployed an instance and you will be able to use this deployment only after a couple of minutes maybe it may take two to three minutes to uh, set up all the backend services so if you have created just now and you start consuming inside your application you may get some errors like the deployment is not found okay so you have to wait for a couple of minutes maybe three to four minutes you have to wait and then start consuming this model sorry Let's go back. So we have done the deployment of a base model. You can see here the types of generative AI models available. As you see, uh, we have seen the list of models available like a GPT-4, GPT-3.5 embeddings, DAL-E. So we have not seen the DAL-E in this uh, location because it is created in North Central US. So what I can do, I'll go and create one more instance in a different region. So let me go and create another open AI instance. But this time I'm going to create this in a different region that is uh, Sweden. I'll be selecting the Sweden Central and the name i can specify as bst open ai sweden okay let me make it this okay it's now deploying a new instance of the Azure OpenAI in the Sweden central location. So why I have selected this location? Because it is providing the DAL-E service in that location. So here, if you see, this is north central US deployment, which is does not providing the DAL-E, but I can see the whisper here, which is the audio uh, uh, model or, or speech recognition model. So here you can see the deployment of uh, OpenAI service in the Sweden Central is done. And here also you can see a different key and endpoint. So here you, you will see the endpoint and the key will be different from the previously created uh, model. 
or previously created open AI uh, account. So I'll go to the over uh, overview section and click on this. Go to open AI studio. And here if you log in, you will be able to see. This is from Sweden Central and you can go to the list of available models. And here you can see the DAL E3 is available here. OK, but you can see there is no uh, whisper available here. So the availability of services or availability of models vary in uh, region by region. So in some regions, some of the services or some of the models will be available. Some other regions, another set of uh, models will be available. But GPT 3.5, I think it is commonly available in almost every uh, region. GPT 4, DAL E, Whisper, all these are available in selected locations only. OK, so here you can see the DAL E is available, but there is no Whisper in this location. So we have seen the availability of uh, the models in different uh, locations, and also we have done the deployment of uh, a model in that particular location. So we have done the deployment of uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo in the <clears throat> North Central US. Uh, in the same way, we can also go and create a DAL E3 instance into uh, the Sweden central location. So either I can go to the deployments and then create a deployment and from here I can select the DAL E or else I can go to models, select the DAL E and then do the deploy. So same window will be open and here you have to specify here. So no quota available for this model. Should be available. I have previously created, but I have deleted that. Only this is available. OK, I am not sure why this is showing an error now. So previously I have created the DAL E3 and deleted that deployment, but uh, maybe it's, it, it may take time to reflect those deletion in the quota. So it's saying no quota available at this time because it's currently in preview, right? So DAL E3 is currently in preview, so it may uh, take time to uh, reflect. The, the, I have recently deleted a new instance. So it may take time to reflect. So otherwise we'll be able to create the deployment of that DAL E also here by specifying a deployment name. Otherwise we have to go and create uh, for DAL E version 2 in East US. I think if you create in East US, you'll be able to get the DAL E2. So I'm just trying to deploy this in East US. 
so currently all these are in um, i mean some of the services are in preview you may not get uh, enough quota to create this resources that's what we saw so the service dal e is available in sweden but i have already consumed one and i think it's not yet re released and reflected in the quota may take some time so i'm trying to deploy the dal e2 so dal e2 is available in east us and we'll try whether it is available or not Okay, it's now created. Let me go to the studio and check whether it is available for deployment. Not listing the DAL E version 2. <clears throat> Maybe the documentation is not updated currently. DAL E is not listing under the East US. This is in East US only. But unfortunately, we are not able to see the DAL E version 2 here. And you can also see GPT 4 is also not available here, not even Whisper. A very limited set of resources available or a limited set of models available in uh, East US location. OK, let it be. We'll try the DAL E later. So we have done the deployment of these base models. You can do this deployment by using the portal or by uh, the Azure CLI command. So the, using the portal, how we can deploy, I have already shown. You have to go to the Azure AI Studio and then go to the models list, select a model and then deploy a new instance or you can also go to the deployments and then create new deployment and then choose the model and give a name for this model and uh, uh, new, give a name for the deployment and then create that deployment but if you are creating it using the azure cli you can use the command the az cognitive services account deployment instead of account create we have we are now using the account deployment create which means we are creating a new deployment inside the account and you have to specify the resource group name resource name and deployment name model name model version and model format and scale settings uh, scale types all these parameters you have to specify while creating it through the command And you can use different prompts to get the completion from this model. So different uh, <clears throat> prompts, different uh, responses you will get as you can see. So for different purposes, we use a different types of uh, prompt because prompt engineering will discuss later. And prompt is very, very important because the what kind of text you are using uh, as an input to the model define the task what it is doing so here you can see some of the examples of the task like classifying this content so if you want to classify the given text like a tweet i enjoyed the training course it's a, a text input text and you have to identify the sentiment so sentiment the completion will be 
positive because I enjoyed the training course means it will be obviously a positive response. But generating a new content, so like uh, I have mentioned, write a story about the kid and the uh, doll, something like that. Similarly, you can say write a poem about databases. So you can see it is creating a poem and uh, giving as a response. Similarly, you can also use the models for transformations or translations. Like uh, in English, you can say hello, and in French, what should be the completion result? So it will be returning bonjour. Just a minute. For summarization, you can specify Scotland is and then give a long description about the Scotland. So it may be a very lengthy paragraph and uh, you have to summarize this text. So you can say summarize the previous text. And the result will be Scotland is and very summarized this description. It will be giving a short description about Scotland. And continuation means you are providing some text input and the res uh, response will be containing the continuation of that. For example, one way to grow tomatoes is to start with seeds. That will be the response. And question answering is like you can ask a question and it will be giving an answer for that. Like how many moons does Earth have? Earth has only one moon. So that will be the result. And you can even do chatting like uh, you can set up. And specify the messages and it will be uh, providing a, or it will be continuing with a sequence of uh, messages or 11 messages. So mo mostly the chat completion API or chat completion endpoint will be used in uh, for, for the chat. Uh, conversation so. As a. Uh, open AI user or, or, or as a GPT user, you will be able to use your GPT model for different purposes like uh, classifying the uh, content, generating the new contents, transformations or translations, summarizations, continuation, question answering and even for chat. So here you will be able to test some of the things in, in your uh, open AI studio playground and uh, you will be. You will be able to test the completions endpoint and uh, <coughs> chat completions endpoint in the open AI studio. I'll show you this uh, right there in the po portal. So this is uh, the open AI studio. So we have already created uh, one deployment, right? So I think uh, we have done any deployment so for DALI. We have not done. OK, so here in the north central US, I have a GPT 3.5 turbo or GPT 35 turbo deployment available. It is using the base model that is GPT 35 turbo. And I want to try some of the things. So here I can go to completions. Or the. Chat right, so here if you go to the chat, you'll be able to select the. Deployment and here <clears throat> you can see some of the uh, configuration parameters. This is the chat completion API or this is the chat completion endpoint. Where you can specify the prompt. That contains different roles inside it. 
We will discuss that in detail in the prompt engineering. You can see here, this is the assistant setup section where you can configure the system message. A system message is used to set up the behavior or specify the behavior of the assistant, like uh, what kind of chat assistant it is. So we can say, you are an AI assistant that is helping the customers in order management. Or you can say, you are an AI assistant that helps the Azure users for uh, the deployment and migration of Azure services. Or you can specify the system message as you are an AI assistant that helps users to uh, manage their bookings, uh, uh, bookings uh, of hotels and uh, flights. So that kind of uh, uh, messages you can set because what is the role or what is the behavior of the AI assistant is configured by the system message. And then in the chat section, you will be uh, able to see. As a user, you will be able to provide a prompt. And uh, the assistant is able to give a response. So there are th primarily three roles we configure here. One is the system. One is the system. The system is system message is typically used for configuring the behavior of uh, the assistant. And second role is the user, in which the user is providing the prompt. And the third is <coughs> the assistant who is giving the responses for the user prompt here you can see we have already set the system message or you can select some pre-created uh, messages from here so this is a custom message and you can provide your text input here how to deploy or how to upload a file in azure blob storage so this is the question that i'm asking so if you want you can set the behavior of this assistant that uh, you are an ai assistant that helps users to manage their azure services so you can set up message like this and you can save those changes and then you can say that uh, how to upload a file in azure blob storage and this response will be coming from the assistant so this is the assistant he is giving the response like to upload a file in the azure blob storage you can use this steps so in the portal you have to do this in the storage explorer you have to do this using the azure cli you have to do this so that means it is giving the detailed information right so this is the chat uh, and this is the chat completion but if you go to the completions <coughs> This is currently disabled. Can you see here the deployments is disabled because from the GPT 3.5 onwards, the chat endpoint is only available. The completions endpoint is not available. So in the documentation somewhere, you will be able to see the difference. Maybe okay. completions. If you go,
it should be mentioned somewhere. Otherwise, while using this uh, completions endpoint, you will be getting an error if you are using the latest model and the latest library. So for Azure also, if you, as a developer, when you call it from the, your Python application or uh, Java or .NET applications, you will be using some SDK. So here is an example of Python. So you can see there are two different versions of Python libraries available. OpenAI 0.28.1 uh, and the OpenAI Python 1.x. So here, when you install this, you have to clearly specify the version because some of the features and functionalities are not available in the latest versions. So if you want to use them, you have to use a specific version or the older version of this uh, uh, open AI library. So it should be mentioned somewhere where the Usually it should come under the completions only. But I'm not able to see it here. Okay, so here, if you are using an older version of uh, a GPT model, then you will be able to see that here. For example, if you go here and do the deployment of an older model, maybe we will try with this. So I have deployed these two uh deployments which means they are using two different uh, models and in the completions here you can see it is listing only this davinci because it's not uh in in, in uh, gpt 3.5 there is no completions endpoint only chat completions will be available so in if you are looking for a completions endpoint, it should be uh, using some old models. Okay, if you use GPT 3.5 or later versions like a GPT 4 or anything, you will not be able to see this completions endpoint. So here, if I can say, uh, Once upon a time, yes. And then you can generate something. So maybe it will be generating some completion text. So you can see the balance of that story is generated by that, right? So it is, <clears throat> it is continuously generating this. You can see it is. First, I have given only this up to this, and it is generated the content from here to here. And then again, I regenerated with the given text. So it is completing the balance. And if, if I give this as the input and then generating, then it will be generating the balance. So like this, it will be adding more and more contents to it. So it's a, it's a way of doing uh, or generating the responses using the completions endpoint. But this completions endpoint is only available in the older models. In the new models, you have to go with the chat endpoint or chat uh, uh, API. So if I go to uh, 
Okay. So DAL E, I think there is no need to deploy any model for the DAL E. There is it's directly available here. Here you can give your prompt and then generate the text. We can provide something. Create a create an image of an elephant sitting on a chair okay this is some some in extra information if you say if it is a realistic image it will try to generate a realistic image in so here the prompt which i have given is this one so you can see this is the image which is created so create a cartoon image So you can see this is now coming as a cartoon image. So this is a different image. You can see the prompt, the main content. Here you what you have to understand. Here this is the main content in my prompt because we'll in the prompt engineering section I, I'll discuss about that. So in the in this prompt, this is the main content, and I have given some extra supporting information. So this supporting information is changing the behavior of the response. You can see. When I added this, it is giving a different response. When I added the different uh, supporting content, it generated a different uh, response. So that is very, very important in prompt engineering. Like your expected result is that you, ha you have to draw an image of an elephant sitting on a chair. But when I provide a supporting information based on that, it will be drawing two different types of images right so that is what the uh, prompt and the supporting content which we'll discuss uh, in late uh, later in detail so here we have uh, seen how this uh, azure open ai services are deployed and then we have uh, how we can consume them from the the uh, azure open ai studio and here uh, you can see the <clears throat> different types of endpoints which is supported, like a completion, embedding, and chat completion. So use completion and embeddings uh, with a GPT-3 based models. That means I have already mentioned completion and embeddings are uh, there in the old models. Chat completion with the 3.5 model means GPT-35 Turbo and later models because there is no completion endpoint. So here, this is a completion endpoint example, means every uh, uh, open AI model uh, or request you can uh, access through or access as a RESTful service. So this is your uh, RESTful service URL, and here is the base URL. You can see the endpoint.openai.azure.com. So this endpoint will be replaced with your service name and then slash open AI slash deployment slash de, uh, deployment and then the name of your uh, sorry the, the so here you have to specify the name of the deployment. So what is the deployment you have used so that you have to specify here and then what API you are invoking. So it's a completions API and this is your input text prompt is this one and the maximum tokens that can be used is uh, uh, five so it will be generating a response like this you can see your favorite shakespeare play is and you are able to see the result is coming as macbeth and this is the embedding endpoint and how you can make a call to the embedding endpoint you can see instead of completions here it is coming embeddings 
and you are giving this input text and it is creating a vector of uh, some numbers, numeric values. So which will be defining the relationship between the text in this uh, prompt. And here is the chat completion endpoint. And while using the chat completion endpoint, you have to say chat slash completions. Instead of simply completions, you have to say chat slash completions, where you will be putting this uh, prompt message in this format is a messages. Uh, messages means it's an array of uh, message contents. Like uh, first you set the role of uh, role as a system and set to the system message like a content is you are an assistant that teaches people about AI. So this is the uh, system message we are setting and then there is a role user and specify a example uh, content like a does Azure OpenAI support multiple languages and then as an example uh, response we are saying role assistant and the assistant is saying yes as your open AI support several languages and the next prompt is the actual prompt so this is an example prompt okay the role is user and then there is a prompt and the role assistant and there is a response so in the same format we are expecting answer for this question also that like a role user and the content is do other cognitive services support trans translation and the message which is coming here from assistant, you can see a role assistant and the content is yes, other Azure services also support translation and so on. So this is the chat uh, completions endpoint or chat completions message structure. So if you see the completions message structure is very simple, just a prompt and uh, what is a text, but here in chat completion, it's just like a proper chat message, like a system, system message, user, user message, assistant, assistant response, again, user, user message, and then um, uh, assistant, then assistant's response, like that it goes. So this uh, is the Azure Open AI's different types of endpoints. And if you are a developer, you will be able to use the Azure OpenAI services in your application. For that, there are SDKs or libraries available for consuming the Azure OpenAI. You, here you can see the Azure.ai.openai is the namespace that you have to use because this will be the uh, NuGet package you can install in your .NET applications. Once this package is installed, you can import the namespace and create an OpenAI client and then making calls to different uh, endpoints. It may be embeddings or maybe uh, chat completion or maybe completion endpoint. So here you can see we are creating different uh, chat messages and the role we are setting as system and this is the system message. The next uh, chat message is user and this is the user prompt and then we are make, uh, sending the request. You can see chat completions options equal to new chat, chat completion options and message is a set of or array of messages. First is a setup message, which is system setup. Second is a user prompt. And you can also specify the other parameters like a max tokens and temperature, right? And then when you make a call to the chat completions API, you can see client dot get chat completions and you are passing the model deployment name and the setup options parameter this one so this will invoke the chat completions endpoint and get the response and from the response you can get the message a response message right so this is what how you invoke the chat completions API in using the C sharp or maybe .NET applications. But the same thing you can do with Python also. So in Python, it is syntactically very simple. You have to install the open AI library and you have to set up the uh, uh, parameters like open AI dot API type is Azure. API base is the base URL, API version and then version of your API. API key is the authentication key. And then you can make a call to the chat completion using openai.chatcompletion.create. 
and then you can specify the engine as your deployment name messages i heard it's a array of messages role equal to system and then content which is the system message role equal to user and user prompt if you want you can give multiple examples like a first message first user message then assistant mes uh, response again user message then assistant response like two three examples you can give but this is zero shot which means there is no examples given okay so once we make a request it is providing the response and from there we'll get the response message content so we have uh, checked how the open ai services are uh, used inside the azure platform so how we can create and deploy the azure open ai how to do the deployment of a model how to consume these in our uh, applications later i will show you the sample code python code for consuming this azure open ai service so now we will be moving into the prompt engineering section but uh, before that i think we can take a 10 minutes break so post the break we'll be continuing so now let's take a 10 minutes break you can go and have a cup of tea or coffee and then we'll continue after 10 minutes okay Hello, participants. Uh, sir is on break. Uh, till that time, we already shared learning achievement badge. You guys, go and redeem your badge. Guys, just you have to uh, sign in your Microsoft Learn account. After signing, uh, you go with that URL, and after clicking your URL, uh, you will see the redeem button. Just click on that redeem button. You will get activated that badge. Guys, if you are facing any problem to redeem your badge, uh, just drop a message on chat box. So we will dare to help you out. I'm sharing again on chat box. Guys, in this batch, you will get uh, all study material and overview of all the module, whatever sir is teaching now. So guys, go and uh, redeem your batch. This is very helpful for you. Also, you can share this batch on Twitter and LinkedIn as a learning achievement. So guys, go and redeem your batch.
uh, here you can see the redeemed steps, like how you can redeem that uh, batch on the screen. First, you have to sign in your Microsoft Learn account. The signing in your page will be visible like this on that screen. Then go with that URL uh, and click on that URL and redeem your redeem your badge. After redeem your badge, your page will be visible like that. And, uh, and here you can see your badge, how you reflect that badge. Still you are facing problem, then drop your message on chat box. Thanks, Perda. Uh, guys who are done with this batch, please put your message on chat box so I will get to know like who are done with this. Thanks, Mayur. Thanks, Ajay. Thanks, Amol.
if anyone facing problem, just drop your message on chat box. We will dare to help out. You can see the step on the screen. After login, you can go with that URL. You already mentioned that URL. Click on that URL. I shared link, click on that link and you can see the redeem button. Uh, you can click on that redeem button. You, your batch will be activated. Yes, sir, you can start now. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we have this discussed about the Azure Open AI service. We have seen how we can deploy different types of models using the Azure Open AI Studio. And we have uh, also checked the difference between the completions endpoint and chat completions endpoint. The next thing we are going to discuss is about the prompt engineering. So what is prompt engineering? Because this is one of the most discussed topic. What is a prompt engineering? So prompt engineering is the way how you construct the prompt. So constructing the prompts to maximize the relevancy and accuracy of the completions, specify the formatting and style of the completions, provide conversation context, and mitigate bias and improve fairness. So I have already shown an example of DAL E. While drawing the image of an elephant sitting on a chair, how the supporting content which I have provided along with the main content in the prompt creates two different types of responses, right? So you have seen the first one is creating almost a realistic uh, image, but the second one was a cartoon image. So what is your result or what kind of uh, response you are expecting? For that, you have to construct your prompts accordingly. So if you simply say that, OK, I want this, so uh, I want so and so. Then this, the model will be generating the response. Using some random formatting or random uh, approach. But if you need the response in a specific format, specific structure, specific style, then you have to mention that inside your prompt. This will help 
you to make the response more relevant for its end users. So here you can see the completions of API endpoint like here you can see the completion point which is clearly mentioned GPT 3.5 or uh, turbo or earlier versions you have to use. And in the prompt you can see include a context in the prompt. You are a professional events planner. Write an invitation for a party to celebrate the launch of a new product. So you can see inside the prompt it is clearly mentioned who are the assistant so the assistant is a professional events planner so that you that you have mentioned in the prompt which is setting the context of that discussion so the 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 model is able to understand yes i'm a professional events planner so i have to create uh, an invitation uh, for a party uh, to celebrate the launch of a new product. So the same thing if you convert this into chat completions API means from uh, GPT 35 or means GPT 3.5 turbo or later versions, you can convert that <clears throat> as a system message. So in the system message, we are setting the context of the conversation or we are setting the role or behavior of that uh, assistant. Sorry. There we are setting the role equal to system and the content as you are a professional events planner and the user is providing the actual prompt content. So see the difference between the two APIs, one is the completions API and the other one is the chat completions API. And you have to be very specific which uh, uh, model you are using. If you are using any models which is prior to GPT 3.5, then you can use the completions API and you have to include that information inside the prompt itself. But in case of chat completions API, which is used in GPT 3.5 or later versions, we can specify that as a system message and providing the clear instruction so the next thing which is, which we which is very important in prompt engineering is how clear instructions we can provide you can see write a product description for a new water bottle so if you are giving only this so your actual uh, expectation is creating a product description for a water bottle. So if you just to say that I want a product description for a water bottle, it will be simply writing some product description. OK, but if you if you are more detailed and if you specify that information in the uh, in, in, in the prompt, you can see it uses that information to generate the response. So you can see uh, the difference between the responses which is uh, coming. So when I, when we use more uh, detailed prompt, like a write a product description for a new water bottle that is 100% recycled, be sure to include that it comes in the natural colors with no dyes and each purchase removes 10 pounds of plastic from our oceans. And you can see when it creates the product's uh, description. It is including these informations, uh, saying that it is more eco-friendly and it is recycle, recyclable and uh, it does not contain any artificial colors and so on, right? So this is more detailed and uh, accurate and, 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 and very relevant content for the, the users, right? So that means, uh, irrespective of the 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 uh, length or the number of tokens used, so you have to be more specific or more detailed. Like you have to say that uh, uh, we we want this particular information. Instead of saying that you can be more detailed, you can say that okay, I want this information. <laughs> Sorry, I want the response in this format in this uh, structure. Yes. 
with this this information is included in that, right? In context learning. So what is in context learning? It's a machine learning technique which undergoes a continuous learning process to adapt new information and produce more accurate predictions and responses by retraining the model in real time on the data generated in production. That means when you make a request, if you as we saw in the previous example, if you make a simple uh, request which in a short sentence, it is just going to produce a response which uh, may or may not relevant to our requirement. But if you if you are expecting the responses to be in a specific structure or specific format, you can give an example inside the prompt. Because you are setting uh, an example inside the prompt, the model will use that example to learn and do the uh, training um, in, in real time and then generate the response based on that. So that means it is doing the training using the example that you have given and then it is generating the response uh, using that example means by by using the structure of that example so it depends on the number of examples you have you mentioned in your prompt we can say it may be a few shots uh, learning or one shot or zero shot few shot means the user includes multiple examples in the call prompt that demonstrate the expected answer format and content the number of examples typically limited to the input size limitation of the model on a single prompt. You have to be very, uh, very aware that uh, there is a limit in the number of tokens that can be used. So, so I want more uh, clear and relevant answer so that I can in, uh, include a 10, 15 examples. That is not correct because if you include more and more examples, yes, it will in, in, uh, increase the accuracy of the model but it consumes more tokens because more text you are passing more tokens will be consumed so that will affect so the response what you are generating can uh, uh, produce uh, responses in the shorter sentence only because suppose if the size the 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 the, the, the tot total number of tokens supported by the model is less and you are using maybe half of the uh, tokens for providing the input means for the prompt so for responses we will get very less uh, tokens so you have to be very uh, very much aware and uh, aware that 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 the number of examples that you include should not affect the models of uh, but the result generation. So, so give two or three examples maximum that is better. So sometimes you can give uh, give a single uh, example also, which we call as one shot. Same as few shot with the difference that the user can include a single example in the call prompt. So if the user is including a single example, then it's typically we call as a one shot uh, learning. But if there are no examples provided, then it is called a zero shot learning. So that means there is no example, so it simply generates a, a result. So n shot learning simply refers one or more uh, examples that we can provide along with the prompt. So here is an example. So we can see a conversation history and uh, and few shot learning where we are including previous messages to help and uh, retain the context and style of the conversation. So because uh, whenever we make new and new requests, the model should be able to remember what was the conversation context, right? So for that, we can include the previous conversation history in the prompt so that it will be able to remember or it will be able to understand the context of the conversation and produce the next response. So here you can see first thing 
in the chat completions, it's always a system message, which means we are setting the role and behavior of the assistant. Like you are an assistant that evaluate the sentiments of user feedback. Then some of the examples which is given here, user is giving a prompt. That is, that was an awesome experience. And the assistant is giving the response as positive, which means it's a positive feedback. The next example is user providing. I won't do it that again. Then the assistant is understanding it's a negative. That means it's a negative feedback or negative. Uh, uh, what to say uh, sentiment. And the user is giving another example that was not worth my time. Then the assistant is giving a response saying that negative, which means it is again a negative sentiment. So already three examples we have given. The first one is a positive. Second one is negative. And third one is again negative. So when the user give the next statement, obviously the uh, we are expecting the assistant to say a positive or negative based on the sentiment. So we can say when the user says you can't miss this, which means it's a positive uh, sentiment. So the role, uh, sorry, the assistant will be responding with a, a positive uh, result, right? So you can see the assistant will be returning the result as positive because from the previous conversations, from the previous conversations, it is understanding whenever the user is providing a content uh, as an assistant, I have to say positive or negative because there are three examples they have given. So the expected response is I have to say uh, positive or negative. So the assistant is understanding. Yes, I, as an assistant, my responsibility is to say whether this text is a positive or negative statement, right? So when the user give the uh, final one, it will be able to say that it is a positive or negative. But uh, think that if the user is not including these previous conversations and directly giving the last one that is role equal to user and saying content is you can't miss this. So the assistant will be confused what he is mean by this. You can't miss this. Then maybe the assistant will say that yes, you can't miss this opportunity because this is coming uh, once in a uh, lifetime, something like that, because the assistant is not able to understand what should be the expected response. But from the previous conversations, it is clearly mentioned. It, the user is expecting a positive or negative uh, sentiment, right? So here it is uh, clearly mentioned. But if the examples are not given and you are directly giving only the uh, prompt like uh, you can't miss this, the assistant may not be able to understand what you are expecting from this. OK, maybe it will give a long description saying that, yes, you cannot miss this because it is very important, something like that, right? So uh, the previous conversation history is given as a few short learning example uh, inside the prompt that will uh, what uh, in, increase or improve the accuracy of the response. Prompt components, if you consider, like we have already seen these prompt components inside the prompt message. We are sending this prompt messages as an array, right? So inside this array, we are sending a system message, one or more user and assistant messages, right? So there is a system role which is used for typically for setting the context or behavior of the assistant. And there will be a user role, which is the user prompt will be provided. An assistant role, which is used for specifying the assistant response. So in zero shot, there will be system and user only. There will be no assistant because we are not giving any examples for assistant. But in the previous example, you can see it's a few shot learning example where we have mentioned the system for setting the system message. Then multiple user and assistant conversations to uh, set the example or set the context, right? The input size is increasing with each generation of GTP, uh, GPT models like a GPT-3 supporting up to uh, 2048 tokens and uh, while GPT-4 is supporting around 32 
k tokens so that as i have mentioned the number of tokens which is supported by the model is very very important so if you use the older versions of models like a gpt3 or uh, <coughs> embedding ada or davinci or something like that so they are uh, capable to handle very less amount of text because their uh, support for tokens is very low but when it comes to new models like a gpt 3.5 or uh, gpt 4 like gpt 3.5 is supporting up to 16k and gpt 4 is supporting up to 32k here is an example of uh, system message we have already seen this so in this we are setting the system message as you are a casual helpful assistant you will talk like an american old western film character and then we are giving a prompt content that can you direct me to the library and then assistant is understanding that because it's a it's already set to the behavior like you have to talk like an american old western film character so it's giving the response like a well howdy there stranger the library mm -hmm. yes like you can see it's a like a film filmy character is talking the, the same way the prompt is generated otherwise if you are not setting the behavior uh, as a uh, film character it may be simply saying okay you have to go and take the right or take the left and do that right so it won't be more uh, detailed or uh, cinematic like this right so the, you can see the 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 response which is more uh, the uh, like a movie dialogue like a more cinematic dialogue right so the the system message is simply uh, setting the behavior of that assistant and it is very very important to use that so that the the assistant is capable to understand what am i or who am i and what i have to do and what are the different components that we use inside the prompt the first one is instruction an instruction uh, to model the uh, on what to do that is write a summary on a given article or you have given some uh, large content and saying you can at the bottom you can say translate this so translate this is the instruction which means you have already given the large text content and the instruction which you are giving is to translate right or you can say summarize this above paragraph so you are telling the model what to do so in your prompt you can include an instruction which will help the model to understand what it has to do second thing is primary content so inside the prompt there will be a primary content which contains the details about that uh, uh, message like uh, suppose if you are giving a paragraph and then at the bottom you are saying please summarize this so the paragraph will contain the actual primary content and that needs to be summarized right so inside the prompt there will be a primary con uh, uh, content it can be a detailed paragraph information questions or topics or something like that right like in uh, dal e example i have mentioned draw the image of an elephant sitting on a chair so that is a primary content and i have given some instruction along with that right so examples is another thing which you can include inside the prompt the examples we have already seen like uh, it's provided to guide the model in understanding the desired style format or structure of the response because from the uh, given examples the the model is able to understand what kind of uh, responses or in which style the uh, user is expecting the response right so we have seen the extra examples in the few short learning uh, scenario and there are cues there can be some cues the cues are some hint 
or clues that can be included in the prompt to guide the model's behavior or encourage a specific response like uh, in the instruction compose a professional email declining a job offer so we are telling the uh, model write a professional uh, letter uh, for declining the job offer but inside this uh, we can also mention like a cue maintain the respectful and ap uh, appreciate the tone throughout the mail express the gratitude uh, for the offer and offer uh, offer a reason for declining so you have to maintain the respect throughout the mail and also you have to mention why you are denying or why you are declining the job offer so the reason you have to mention so you are giving a hint like simply com composing a professional email means you are simply saying okay i don't want to accept this offer so and so finish but if you explain or if you add a cue like you have to be more uh, uh, respectful and then uh, mention the gratitude that thank you for offering this but i'm not able to uh, accept this offer because so and so reasons so while writing the letter it will be keep that uh, uh, structure right so that is the cue so you are giving a hint to the model so how to do that supporting content is uh, some additional informations that you are providing with the main content because that will help the model to uh, extract some informations from somewhere or it will uh, identify the the supporting text from those informations <laughs> so here is an article about climate change and it's about uh, its effect on biodiversity and then give a link so please summarize the key points so you are giving a link a link is giving as a supporting content and you are telling it to summarize the key points uh, in that particular article right so that is what uh, the supporting contents so while writing the prompt you can include the instructions primary contents examples cues and supporting content it's not mandatory that you have to include everything in the prompt no depends on the scenario depends on the requirement you can include them so some some of the uh, uh, prompt may not require examples for example uh, while uh, pro giving a prompt to the dal e while giving a prompt like a uh, draw an image of uh, elephant sitting on a chair so you don't have to give an example for that right or you can say uh, write a uh, poem about uh, the sunset so you don't have to give an example for that so it will write a poem about the sunset but you can give some cues like uh, include or uh, express the uh, beauty, beauty of the nature and the ocean something like that so you can give some cues there is no need for example so you don't need to say that write a poem like this and then you have you have to give an example that's not necessary so in some scenarios we can use examples like mostly in the chat conversations you can give the examples but in some scenarios where the content generation is required you don't need examples instead of that you can give the cues like hints like write a poem uh, about the sunset and you can say q like in uh, uh, what express the beauty of nature uh, like uh, ocean and some other things so then it will write a poem including these informations inside this poem right so that this that means uh, uh, in every prompt you don't need to include this uh, examples cues supporting content everything so maybe some of the uh, prompt you may have a primary content and only instruction like you will give a main paragraph and below there is a instruction like a summarize the above content or translate this content something like that okay so that means sometimes the primary content with examples sometimes the primary content with the cues sometimes the primary content with the instruction and examples and so there will, there will be different thing so since we have learned this all we have to use everything inside the prompt to get, get the accurate results no it's not like that okay use your common sense and start using this uh, 
uh, components inside the prompt. Some of the prompt engineering techniques, if you see the chain of thought prompting, that is COT, is a technique used to guide the output of a language model by iteratively building upon the previous context or response. The idea is to create a coherent and evolving narrative or conversation by extending the context step by step. The technique is particularly useful for generating long and structured pieces of text. Hope you remember that we have, uh, means I have uh, gone to the uh, Azure OpenAI Studio and started with a story of a king. Once upon a time, there was a king. And then I uh, generated the text. So I, when I made the first request, it filled some part of the uh, sto story. Then again, when I clicked the generate and make, made the request, it is again added some more things on top of that existing content, right? So that means whenever I make new request, it is using the previous content as the input and adding more information. So like a, a movie dialogue or uh, conversation. So first person is talking something, then second person is responding. Again, the first person is talking something. The second person is responding. So like the, you can uh, write this conversation, a lengthy conversation step by step. In the first iteration, only first person is talking. Second iteration, first, uh, second person is also talking. In the third one, again, the first person is giving the uh, question. Like this, you can increase the uh, content, like a, like a conversation you can build or you can write a story as we have seen. We have started with a small sentence and then it added some part of the story. And then in the next iteration, it is adding some more information into that. Hope you remember that example we have done for the story creation. I don't remember where we, in which we have done. So in the completions endpoint, we have done that, right? So here, I think it's not here. Yeah, here only. So you saw this, I have given only up to this and it was written the story up to this. Then later it added incrementally. So if you go with this, it is adding more things into this and create a larger content, right? So you can see it is incrementally building this larger content, right? So this is an example of chain of thought prompting. In which scenarios we can go for this? It is useful for simulating the dialogues, storytelling, or a scenario where the dynamic and evolve, uh, dynamic and evolving narrative is desired. That means, as I have mentioned, where the storytelling is required. So it was telling a story, right? So it is creating uh, the the story uh, incrementally. It's not writing the complete story in one go. Instead of that, it is generating the story incrementally so similarly while uh, creating the dialogues you can also use this approach <clears throat> so here is another example which is given so chain of thought it's ask a model to break down its response and explain its reasoning so what sport is easiest to learn but hardest to master give a step-by-step -step approach of your thoughts ending in your answer. So you can see in step one, it is giving some information. Step two, it is giving some more information. Step three is going more detail like this, right? So this is chain of thought prompting. So now we have understood what is prompt engineering in prompt engineering what are the key components uh, being part of this prompt and in which a scenario we have to use them and how to use them so we have already seen this in the azure uh, open ai studio we have seen some of the uh, apis like uh, some chat examples we have seen we have also seen some of the completion uh, endpoints or so completions usage and also we saw the dal e for the 
the uh, image drawing. So now if you are a developer, so I hope maybe the, there will be some developers in your group. So if you are a developer, how you are going to consume these Azure Open AI models? Like here we have done the deployments. So how you can go and use this deployments inside our code? So I'll show you a sample code. So this is a, a Python notebook, Jupyter notebook, where I have written some code for consuming the uh, deployed model. As you can see here, I have installed the Azure Open AI library. As you can see, the pip install Open AI. So this will be installing the Open AI library. As you can see, it is installed. Very importantly, this is going to install the version 1 or 1.x. So if you need the older version, you have to be more specific and install a, a 0.28 version. So since it is uh, the latest version, version 1.x X will be installed. So 1.1 or 1.2, whatever it is. And later, you can create the code for connecting to the Azure Open AI service and making the request. So how, it, how to do that? For that, first we have to import the Azure Open AI uh, from the Open AI package. As you can see, from Open AI, import Azure Azure Open AI. So this is going to install the Azure Open AI class, and we are creating an object of that Azure Open AI. So we can see Azure Open AI, and then we have to specify some parameters. Like uh, we have to specify the API key. So since, uh, since I have created multiple uh, OpenAI services, I have to specify the uh, API key of a single model. Suppose if I'm trying to use the one which is deployed in North, North Central US, I can go back here. Which one is in the North Central US? I can take that. So here, you can see this is the one which is in the north central us i can go inside this and get the key from here so here is the key which i can copy and inside my application code i can put that key the next thing is api version so which uh, this is the latest api version which is available so that will leave as it is and the endpoint I can take from here, take this, and here you have to put the API endpoint. You can see I have placed the API key version and the endpoint, and using this, it's creating a open AI client instance. And please understand when you go to the Azure documentation, there will be two different codings you can see. One is for the old version, version 0.28.1 or older versions. And the next one is version 1.x or later libraries. So here I'm using version 1.x demo. Or if you go here. <coughs> yeah, so here if, if you go to the chat completions. Here you can see. See, this is 0.28.1. This is for the older one, and this is for the later one, latest one. So you can see this is installing the OpenAI, and this is a specific version. But if you go to this here, you can see the code for creating the Azure OpenAI instance. So you can see. In version 1.x, you, ha you have to import like this. But in the version 0.8, it is totally different. You just need to say import OpenAI, then openai.api type, openai.api base, openai.api key, and openai.api version. So in older library, you have to set up the 
open ai instance like this but in the later versions you have to create an instance of the azure open ai class and then you can make a call to here we are using the chat completions api so you can say client that is this is the client instance so client dot chat dot completions which means we are calling the chat completions api and then calling the create so creating a chat completion and you can specify the model which is used so in our case which is the model i'm using from the north central us gpt 35 turbo so th this is the name of the deployment so this name i have to use here if you provide a wrong name then it will be it will be showing an error saying that the deployment not found and for example if i say here one and then you can set the messages you can see here is the system message and this is an example we are putting this is a one one shot example because one example is provided here if the user is asking that is there any azure container service available on azure to store the container images then the assistant is replying yes you can use azure container registry for storing the container images this is the answer so the next question is again the user is asking saying provide the list of azure services that helps you to deploy the web applications so this is the uh, prompt and we are expecting the answer for this one right so here i have set the system messages you are a helpful assistant for supporting the azure users so now when this uh, chat completion endpoint is executed it generates a response inside the response there will be choices from the choice of zero it generates the mess uh, it gets the message so message dot content will be printed so here i'm going to execute that you can see here not found error is coming because here you can see the error message saying that deployment not found right so deployment not found means here i have mentioned the deployment name as turbo one which is not there so i have to change the deployment name as to the existing one which is there right so you can specify that and when i run this see it is providing the response saying that the azure provides several services to deploy the web application some of the popular services are and is giving the list of services right similarly here also another example which is uh, used for uh, helping the uh, ticket booking process so it's a helpful assistant for booking the flight tickets and how we can book the ticket so here you can, I'll, I'll just example uh, execute this So here also the same model I'm using and here you can see in this example we are I'm, I'm setting the system message as you are the helpful assistant for booking the flight tickets and here is the user prompt saying is there any flights available from Mumbai to Delhi on Sunday and the assistant is saying yes there are many flights available which is start from Mumbai and goes to Delhi and the next prompt is the actual prompt which is can you help me with the steps required to book the flight ticket so that means i am expecting the steps as the response to get the to to book the tickets so now if i execute this you can see these are the steps right so you can visit a reputable travel website like a uh, make my trip or something like that or yatra.com something like that and then you have to search for uh, flights from the departure city which is mumbai and arrival city delhi along with the travel date which is the sunday 
and then specify the passengers and select the class like uh, economy, business or first class, whatever it is. So it is giving the complete uh, help information like how to book a flight ticket, right? So it cannot go and do the booking, but yes, it can help you to, to uh, book the ticket, like the steps can be provided by this, right? So this is how we are invoking the uh, open AI APIs from the Python application. So similarly, all the other uh, uh, APIs also you will be able to go and uh, invoke, like whether it is completions or chat completions or for uh, DAL E for drawing the images or embeddings for the uh, vector generation of numerics. So all can be invoked by using this Python code. Not only Python, yes, as I have mentioned, it is uh, supporting different languages. If you go to the Azure documentation, you can see there are different uh, 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 languages supported. And if you want, you can even directly make a RESTful request. You can make a REST API request to those HTTP endpoints. That is also possible. So that's the end of uh, this session. So I'm done with the session. If you have any questions, you can post your questions in the chat window. I'll try to answer those questions. If you have any more questions, you can put it in the chat.
thank you sir for this wonderful webinar uh, uh, i hope all the participants i hope all the participants found today this webinar which was hosted by sonu satyadas sir if you have any question or queries please put your uh, message on chat box and also we shared a feedback form so guys uh, submit your feedback form we value your feedback to continuously improve our webinar so guys go and submit your feedback form also, we shared our upcoming series uh, that is Zen AI Spark. Uh, so, guys, uh